Kevin Byrne, thanks for joining us. Mike, it's a great pleasure. Now, can you tell us about the type of businesses Enterprise North represents and the regions that you cover? Look, we, we represent a modest number of businesses, uh, 20 plus uh, uh, in total. Uh, and uh, we cover across the uh, north northeastern part of uh, uh, Queensland or northeastern part of Australia, actually. We named Enterprise North because we concentrate our work around policy and infrastructure issues with a focus across Northern Australia. We, we, we see ourselves as integral to the development of Northern Australia, which is the top 25% of the Australian continent. It's a big, it's a big land mass. We work collaboratively with uh, as best as possible organisations in the Northern Territory and Northern Western Australia. But our policy work and the infrastructure projects that we advocate for most of the time apply to northeastern Queensland and uh, we're based in Cairns. Our membership actually has a view to making life better uh, for our northern communities and to see them grow and prosper uh, and uh, to provide opportunities as we move forward as a country. We know costs are a big problem for Aussie businesses notably uh, energy and, and labour cost. Can you tell us what costs are the most problematic for your North Queensland businesses? Uh, I would imagine freight being one of those. Freight, freight's one uh, because of the vast distances. And there's a great challenge here about how we handle that. Uh, do we put more and more uh, big trucks on the road? I don't think so. I think we need to start looking uh, uh, laterally at uh, Im Im improving our rail connectivity. I mean, we've gone off rail uh, for the last number of decades, and I think that uh, we need to uh, revisit that and, and, and have a look at how rail is going to play uh, a more important part in the future and to get big trucks off our uh, already stretched road system. So there's a cost there. The other cost is, is with energy in all its forms, really, uh, and the challenge about how we marry the energy requirements for the future to our population base. Now, there's a great uh, deal of emphasis saying, on, oh, what we're going to do is have uh, uh, energy supplied by the sun and wind. Uh, and that's the way, that's the direction we need to go. And you hear that religiously from those that are on the environmental side. Well, that's not going to be enough. Uh, so we have to have a look at the energy mix in the future. And energy is too high here. Uh, the cost of energy is too high. Similarly, the cost of insuring uh, our, our businesses, uh, the activities of those businesses, and more importantly, and sorry, equally as important, is uh, the domestic insurance costs for those people who live in Northern Australia. I mean, these are big challenges that uh, tax the minds of governments, state and federal, uh, as to how we address that. But, you know, it's been taxing the minds of these people for 30 years now. And one of the reasons why we are so vocal in this, in this space is because we're saying out loud regularly we need to attend to these issues rather than identifying them and putting them on the back burner. And we've done this too often uh, across northern Australia. And, uh, and, and one of the reasons for that is we don't have the population uh, numbers to justify boots on the ground in our parliament houses, whether they're down in Canberra or in Brisbane uh, or in Darwin or, or, or in West Australia. So we need to grow our population across the north to justify Pete, the boots on the ground in our parliamentary system where the decision makers are. So hence our emphasis on growing populations across northern Australia and making sure we have taxation regimes and investment regimes and so on that will support that population growth. It's all very well talking about us talking about, you know, uh, great crops or having wonderful product to sell to the consumer, whether they're a, a tourist or local or for export, you know, whether it's international or national, got to have skilled labour. Um, is, that a, is that a real problem, getting people to actually move there and, and actually become that skilled labour for industry up there? Yes, it is, uh, Mike. And the reason for that is 
pretty well this, that we're talking in Australia now at the end of a year in, into this pandemic that there's a great going to be a great migration from the urban centres to the regional centres. But really, when people sit down and do the sums and decide if they're going to move their families and themselves, there's got to be a carrot in it for them. Just at the moment, the, the costs are prohibitive for many of these people to move, and and they look at they look at the tra trajectory of where their lives are going to take them. So they need to know that there is going to be uh, opportunities for themselves uh, and their children. They need to know there's going to be good education systems, good health systems, uh, good social systems, good recreational uh, facilities good schools to make them take that leap of faith. I, I, would, I would suggest to them to look objectively at that because, you know, I'm, I'm not a native of here. I, I come from a different part of the world, but uh, I know a lot of people who've taken the leap of faith to come into regional Australia and they do very, very well. Uh, but they do very, very well when governments have a view to making sure that the support mechanisms for them to make that leap of faith are there. Now, we don't expect to have, you know, massive hospitals uh, at a great cost to the taxpayer uh, for a small population base. We get it that these things will come as population grows, but we need the confidence in the region that governments have our back to make sure the policies and infrastructure will be provided to ensure that that steady growth will increase so cumulatively over decades, we know that we're going to have, for example, in Cairns City, we have a, a, a recorded population base of say 170,000 in the geographic boundaries of Cairns City. We should be able to confidently say, listen, that's going to grow to 250,000 in the next uh, 12, 15 years. And, and by the way, that 250,000 will translate into 300,000 by the year 2035. They're the sorts of figures we need to talk about and we need to have the confidence that the governments of the day and the governments of the future will understand that and be committed to making sure there is a decentralisation in Australia out of the bigger urban centres into regional Australia and in particularly northern Australia that I represent. It may seem, this may seem uh, to many as a, a ridiculous question, but and if, because you've had so much rain, I mean, it's just, and gentle sea breezes becoming cyclones before you know it. But what about water? I mean, your water security up there, are the catchment areas big enough to sustain a growing population and industry too? Well, we've got to, we've got to jump this hurdle of sensible uh, um, issues in relating to how we manage the environment. I mean, this part of the world is, uh, um, gripped at times uh, for years at a time and then it, the emphasis goes off it by greeny fever and uh, illogical interpretation of uh, uh, climatic events and, and uh, other issues. So there is an overemphasis on the negativity and the negative spin. Look, some years ago I proposed uh, a, um, a position for the Queensland Government of the day to adopt when there was a drought in the southeast corner of Queensland, that we provide further dams in northern Australia. And if we were really serious, we could provide and we could pump uh, water from those uh, bigger dams all the way down south. Uh, it followed a, a proposal to uh, provide gas from uh, Papua New Guinea all the way down to um, Gladstone, for example. And I propose that we follow a similar uh, pipeline route. Now, that was poo-hooed at the time, but I think there is merit in no, that sort of thinking. We have far too few uh, genuine uh, catchment facilities for water to store and grow the uh, agriculture and uh, uh, the horticultural sector of our part of the world. I think as we grow our population, uh, the demand will be there. The demand is there now, uh, but it, it comes at some cost. And this is one of the costs of doing businesses, business up in our part of the world. But having said that, if we are far-sighted and we are visionary 
uh, we can provide this. And there are organisations like ours, Enterprise North, uh, and the regional development organisations that are, are basically supported by the federal government across the north who are looking into collaboration to making sure that we have enough water and energy resources for the growth I'm talking about to provide some competitive costs uh, uh, to remove a lot of the excessive cost pressures in that area. If somebody wants to find out more about uh, northeast Queensland, uh, right up the top, um, do you know of a good website that we could perhaps visit? <laughs> Look, if yes, I do. Uh, there's Cairns Tourism Industry Association has a, a website. I mean, Tourism Tropical mm. North Queensland has a website. There's any number of websites about our part of the world. But if you want to talk about the economic uh, realities and, and, and uh, the issues that really uh, are driving the economic agenda here, then visit Enterprise North, if you will. Uh, and uh, contact us. We're only too happy to make contact back again and, and, and discuss. Uh, you know, the, the beautiful thing about our part of the world is we're out there, we're visible. Uh, people know where Cairns is. Uh, they know Australia. Uh, and uh, we, want, we want a lot of people to come visit us. We want people to come and live here. Uh, we want people to participate in the, in the future growth and development. And I thank you for uh, allowing us to do this on your, uh, uh, on your show. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, it's just uh, missing the, uh, the bacon and eggs for breakfast down by the waterfront um, or, or a couple of cold beers at Hemingway's either in Cairns or in uh, Port Douglas. But you never know. I mean, I've, we've been up there twice in a few months. We may have to do that again. Kevin Byrne from... You, Kevin you, from... You better do that. Quickly, we'd have to, to do that quickly and with a lot of confidence, mate. Kevin from uh, Enterprise North, thank you very much. Thank you.